Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, the Cyber Guy. I'm your host for the Cyber Underground. Once again, I teach for the University of Hawaii Kapi'olani Community College. I teach network security and ethical hacking. And today, we're going to get started with the very young new cyber people in the state of Hawaii, the Girl Scouts USA. Welcome. Hi. Look, I need you guys to introduce yourselves. There's three of you here, and I need to introduce the organization and then who you are and how you got involved. So let's start with Sherry. Hi, I'm Sherry Chang. I'm the CEO of Girl Scouts of Hawaii. The CEO? Yes. Okay. And how did you get involved? With Girl Scouts? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm a fourth generation Girl Scout family. Fourth? Yes. So, so you've been doing this for a long time. Oh, uh, stage, actually, or? I was in the hospitality industry as a senior executive for 35 years. And oh, okay. then when I left that, I decided I wanted to do go back to nonprofit work. And someone recruited me in to take over Girl Scouts. Well, good for you. Giving yeah. back to your community. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for doing that. Yes. And uh, what is the Girl Scouts, the organization? I mean, when did it begin? What is its mission? Where are we going with it? Well, Girl Scouts on the mainland started earlier than in Hawaii. Hawaii, we started in 1917. Mm. Um, our mission is to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. And so... By the way, that's you. We'll introduce you. <laughs> <in a second. laughs> yeah. and, and so that's, that's something that we take very seriously. We feel that we are developing the future leaders of the world, and we want them to be community-oriented. We want them to have great leadership qualities, and we want them to have the skills and competency to be able to do leadership well. Well, that's wonderful. That's a lot. That's a big mission statement. It is. It wow. Is. So did they force you to memorize that? No. That no, would be, oh, that's good. It just kind of comes naturally. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's introduce you two guys. First of all, you're a cadet? Yes, I'm a cadet. And you're a senior? Yes. Okay, so let's describe, first of all, introduce yourself and describe what that means. So I'm Allison. I'm a cadet. Uh-huh. And I am in middle school, and we work on helping the younger girls learn stuff for their badges. I see. Yeah. Okay, and you're a senior? Um, I'm Kendall. I'm in high school. I'm actually in my first and second year of high school, which is the senior level. Once I go up to the, sec the third and fourth year of high school, I'll become an ambassador. An ambassador. Okay, and the final levels of Girl Scouts are? Um, the last year of Girl Scouts, you are an ambassador, which is in 12th grade. 12th grade. And, and ambassadors, do they have a different mission? As an ambassador after high school, it's a, you, equivalent well, to Eagle Scout, maybe? Uh, well, Ambassadors, actually, any senior and above can actually go for their gold award, um, I see. which is similar to um, the highest level in Girl Scouts. That's like the Boy so Scouts, once they Eagle graduate, Scout once they graduate, um, they become adult members, hopefully. And and, and you guys consider paying it back afterwards? So you're going to be um, assistant yeah. troop leaders, troop leaders, get involved in the organization? Eventually, my plan is to start my career in college and get through that and set myself up on a life plan. And then I planned on getting back into Girl Scouts and giving back. With Good. The college is on your radar, just college in general. And then let's talk about what you guys are doing now that brought you on the show. So you're doing STEM, science, sure. technology, engineering, and math. And this year involves some cyber. Right. Um, Girl Scouts as a national organization, we've made a commitment. Uh, STEM is one of our core curriculum, along with entrepreneurship, outdoor experiences, life skills, etc. And on the STEM component, we've committed to put 2.5 million young women into STEM careers by 2025. That's aggressive. It is aggressive. Wow. Um, and we have a, a great plan on getting there. We launched even just this year alone 30 new STEM badges. So we have everything from mechanical engineering to programming, computer science, space science, all different types. This year, our focus has been on cybersecurity. So from kindergarten on up, we have different programs. The kindergarten, the lower level, uh, we have a program sponsored by Raytheon. And for the um, new, uh, the upper level, we were selected by Palo Alto Networks uh, to pilot for the national program on cybersecurity for Girl Scouts. So, so for Scouts people in the cheap seats, uh, we all know Raytheon, mm -hmm. aerospace. Mm -hmm. uh, Palo Alto Networks is equivalent to, say, Cisco or Fortinet. They do security devices for networking components right. and uh, some serious stuff uh, and, out of and Silicon made, Valley. Yeah. Right, and one of their executives made a very interesting comment. He said, if you had to look at who would help write the code and defense strategy for the United States in the future, who would you plan on? And he said, we decided the Girl Scouts would be the great workers well, for the future. Well, that's fantastic. So, so our plan is through all the different variety of STEM careers that are available that we get the girls. We have STEM Fest this weekend with 419 girls on this island, oh, and we have wow. STEM Fest on every island going on. And 
the girls will have over 120 STEM professionals, the majority of them women, so that the girls can learn that they too have an opportunity in mentorship, internship, and, and just learning all about the different STEM careers that could open up for them. Now this th this weekend you're doing yes, that. Uh -huh. Well, why don't you tell the audience about that? Uh, every island, including like Molokai and Nanai? Or... Right, well the, on the other islands, theirs is uh, two weeks from now, but okay. uh, the, the one on this one is at Pacific Aviation Museum. We bring in 419 girls from all over, including our what we call our outreach troops, our after-school leadership program troops that are in Title I schools. Bring these kids in. They have an opportunity. Every one of them will be shooting off rockets. Every one of them will be learning different skills, like building da Vinci bridges, if you're familiar with that. Um, just all different types of skills that they'll be working on. They just get them interested in STEM, because most people don't realize, but by middle school, most young girls start losing um, confidence in math and science. And so it's our aim is to make sure that they've had a lot of fun from kindergarten on up, so they won't have that challenge of, of not having the confidence and competence in, in STEM careers. You guys looking abilities. forward to this? Yeah. That's great. So Fort Island is where uh, the Pacific Aviation Museum is, right? right? Down there in Pearl Harbor, where mm -hmm. they have the Missouri and, and the U.S.'s Bofin, I think, is still yes, there, right? Uh -huh. um, do you want to tell people how they can uh, they go look this up on the web? They, 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 I mean, it's already closed. They can't. It's, oh, it's that's too bad. Down, oh, so. we should have had you on yeah. earlier. Okay. <laughs> What's your next event then? Uh, well, we just had STEM camp also, so actually, as we get closer you guys are to, busy. yeah, we, yes. we have a lot of lot of things going on right now. So, but. But the STEM portion, we have pretty much every month something is going on involving the girls. Um, so how many badges have you guys done in STEM? Um, I want to say an approximate 20 in the past three years that I've been in Girl Scouts. 20. But these patches and badges, they take quite a while, unless it's an event where you get the patch as you do the event. Mm -hmm. They take quite a while because you do have to do things within your school to give back to your community and teach about what you learned. So. Oh, so you not only do it, but you have to teach others about it. Right, yeah, right. Wow, which reinforces the learning, exactly. which is a right. part of the learning process. As a teacher, I, I'm constantly concerned about the knowledge retention after mm -hmm. the class ends because, you know, students, you guys, you come in, you learn this stuff, and you regurgitate it on a test, and then you just say, nah, forget it. I, I don't want to think about math anymore, and you move on. So it's good that you're reinforcing that. Right. It's sticking in your brain. You can't get away from it. So these, uh, these badges that you do, there are, uh, what, many projects? And I can just give you a taste of each one of these fields. Could you explain it? Well, they all tie into Journeys, which you can yeah. talk about. Um, so they tie into Journeys, which is an overall community service where you give back to your community in a way. Um, some Journeys I've done involve the ASLP troops, where we have done stories that they've gone and told to orphanages. What's an ASLP? After school leadership program. After school leadership program. Okay, so I'm completely. So I those don't know. are girls in Title I schools. Those are grant funded troops uh -huh. uh, because they're in areas that uh, they may not have the opportunity to be in Girl Scouts or or their family can't afford to be is in Is that it. what Title I is? Right. Well, okay. Title I um, is, you know, under-resourced schools where 50 percent or more of the kids are on the free uh, breakfast program. Okay, so it's a and challenge. So, yeah. Right. So we go into those schools because we don't want finances to be a barrier to any girl to be Girl Scouts, and we have grant-funded programs that pays for everything from their uniforms to attending STEM Fest, oh, good buses for you. coming out from Nanakuli and Maili. We actually even had troops and boys and girls clubs in Nanakuli and Maili and, and different places. Um, but we're on all, all islands. Um, so for the folks in the cheap seats that might not be in the state, Nanakuli, Maini, uh, Wainai, Makaha, uh, up that, that's the west coast. Right, and right. Uh, traditionally uh, low-income areas. Right, right, right. But we do have some ASLP troops in town because we do have some Title I schools in town, like Palolo Elementary is a good example. Right. So the, the, there's pockets of, yes. of opportunity or challenges, mm -hmm. and, and you, you guys are addressing those. Yes, I love this. Yes. So you do this. Can you, let's walk through a journey. Yeah, let's take a journey together. <laughs> take me on that journey. Let so, me follow the path with you. It begins with a simple thing called a journey book. Okay. And it's basically a book that tells you the story of what the purpose of what you're doing is. Okay. Um, we have lots of them. Um, one of the ones I did was breathe. I did that as a cadet. We learned about the air and our environment around us. And I went to a camp for that one. And as we learned about the air and the environment around us, we also learned about water. So they brought in STEM experts that helped us learn about water and how we can take care of the environment. Um, and in a way, after we left, we gave back by telling our friends and spreading the story of what we can do to make less pollution in our environment. So. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Can, can you tell me um, what else in STEM have you covered? You've, you've covered some programming. 
and some engineering. Engineering. What do we do in engineering? The the bridge we, building. We, we actually yes. Yeah, uh, uh, are you familiar with the Da Vinci bridge? I am not. Da Vinci Tell us all bridge. about that. Well, you built it, didn't you? Recently. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, well, you built one. On I now. did. Yeah. Um, I went to um, STEM camp, and I actually acted as a presenter when our presenter was a little bit late. And what we do is we take planks and boards and we make a bridge out of them. It's a team building with a STEM built engineering background to it. And what the concept is, is you have to make a bridge that is sturdy enough to stand on its own and hold a person so you can walk across it. And what we did was we took a series of steps and we had to find out how we could support all of the beams using every material we had. And we put it all together and we took pictures with it. And then the goal was to take it down and put another person in the leadership position of being the head engineer telling us how we're supposed to build it. And you're building these without nails or anything like that. It's freeform, that, so that's why it's a structural process. I see, I see. Okay, good engineering skills. Right. What else have we done? Oh, programming. Yeah? Programming? In what? Uh, we, well, with the programming, we'll have different games and stuff, mm -hmm. and it'll teach, especially the younger girls, how different things, like how if you mess up on one step, it won't work with the rest because it all connects inside one big game. So what languages are you programming in? Um, we do different forms of coding. We do things that are basic coding where you, we work with some nanobots sometimes. My troop was actually talking about doing that where you get a little robot and you draw the line codes and it's the coloration. Um, we also do coding online with the computer, so the so numbers let's, and let's, calculations. Let's review really quick. The nanobots with the coding and the lines. So this is the one where you, you color code on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and the robot will roll along right. on its mm -hmm. own, and when it encounters a certain color, it will do, the trick. do a trick, right. spin around, turn right. left, whatever. That's really neat. I like that. Okay. And did you do anything with mobile devices? Um, as our activities go on, we probably will be building into it. But so far within my troop, we're just starting the pilot. Mm -hmm. So we haven't gotten very far in depth, but I'm pretty sure it's expected to come. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Okay, let's let's get into the cyber part of it. What'd you learn? What'd you do? <laughs> What'd you learn that you can talk about is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were the one that went to camp. So you could talk. <laughs> All right, well, with cyber security, um, with the younger girls, we start them off with the layers of protection project. So uh, the layers of protection project is teaching them how they can protect their information and how they can keep it away from people that will hack it and to do different stuff with it. That they so the layers would be like a multiple security layers yeah. so that you don't have to depend on just one thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell people, uh, like my students when I'm teaching them, uh, this is your house. You have a fence, you have a dog, you have a door lock, grandma's got a shotgun, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's multiple layers, right? And that's good that you're, you're learning this layering technology, right? The fence in depth is what they call it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Tell me more about this. So we'll start off with a hands-on project. So we'll start off with like a box, mm -hmm. and they'll find different materials that they can uh, wrap it with or they can cover it with. And then they'll soon figure out like, well, okay, if all this stuff um, connects to cybersecurity, um, then let's say a firewall can help us uh, keep our phone numbers or our personal information safe. Interesting. So it's a tactile experiment as well as physical, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there's a coding with this experimentation. Uh, no. No, you haven't done that yet. No. Nope. No, I, I the email you sent me mentioned something about trace route. Did you guys get to experiment <laughs> with some um, of these commands? So we recently, um, with the juniors, my little sister is a Girl Scout as well, and with her group of friends, we actually did use the trace routes. Mm -hmm. And what it is is basically it's the. Um, Sorry. It is the what you can use that will trace everything you put into your computer, all the information and where it's going on your computer, and it will tell you where it's been, where it's going, and what its final destination is. And so you can basically track where everything has been, what it's all touched, what information is linked together. Let's talk about that more in depth right after the break. We're going to go and pay some bills right now. Uh, join us in just one minute, everybody. Until then, stay safe. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. 
We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back. This is the second half of my show. This week's Cyber Underground, we're going over what the Girl Scouts USA are doing in the state of Hawaii for STEM and cybersecurity. Welcome back, Sherry and Allison and Kendall. Kendall. Kendall, Allison. Allison. Okay, got you. Okay, well, sorry. <laughs> I should know better to get my guests all straightened out. <laughs> it's okay. At least I'm getting my own name right. That's right. I started That's off good. That's good. the show not getting my own name right. Well, guys, let's talk about STEM, the camps that you guys do, and what you do in your camps. So, you want to start out? Um, so, with the camps, we break up into groups. So, okay. we'll have different stations, and it'll go over almost everything. So, we'll have the programming, we'll have uh, the engineering, like uh, the bridge building. We mm -hmm. would uh, engineer, and we'll have the lead engineer, and we'll do that. Then, with the programming, we'll have uh, mobile devices, we'll have laptops, and we'll do uh, different programming activities that can teach us how to connect different codes to have a final outcome. So you place blocks of code in different places and watch what happens on a user interface, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a gaming mm -hmm. simulation. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of these JavaScript uh, games come out. The Star Wars did one, uh, Disney mm -hmm. did one. Yeah, you mm -hmm. put the different blocks in there, you make the uh, BB-8 walk right. around the screen. Right. Have you guys done that one? Similar to Similar that. Similar to that, okay. So what else do you do in, in these camps? Well, uh, we'll do team exercises. So we'll do, um, we'll make sure the girls can work together and we can to work together to have our outcome. And we'll do a lot of thinking exercises. So we'll have a big puzzle and we'll try to put it together on a group. I love, I've got to say this, I love that they're working in teams. Mm -hmm. So basically IT guys, Ta -da. Uh, we're usually loners, uh, a little antisocial. We have trouble communicating. Uh, there's a problem, I always say, uh, converting geek to human when we're right. speaking. And it, it's great that you guys are working in teams and being able to communicate as you do these projects because you lose those skills and you can't actually interact in your environment. Uh, let me give you a quick story. I was a cryptographer for several years and I got so into binary that I felt that there was a delay in speaking English. People would talk mm -hmm. to me and I would have to come back after a few seconds and, oh, yes, that's what you said. And I, I had trouble tying my shoes, mm -hmm. but I was really great at cryptography. So <laughs> it's, it's wonderful that you guys work in teams because uh, sometimes we get isolated and we forget how, you know, the human interaction is, is a tremendously important, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, right. social engineering. Right, and Girl Scouts is all about cues. cooperative and hands-on learning. I, I love that. You're, you're, uh, you uh, reinforce the knowledge. Right. Um, you have a journey book, which gives people a purpose. Why am I learning this? And you have uh, different types of learning, the tactile mm -hmm. and, and the visual, of course, mm -hmm. and auditory, and you're combining all the sentences. This is really a, a tremendous wonderful educational process, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm loving hearing about this. But what's this. the number one activity at STEM camp that they love? Uh, the number one activity at STEM <laughs> camp has is a ba major tie between archery and rockets. Right. We do rocket launching, and this year and last year, actually, we did glow-in-the-dark rockets, where we had glow sticks in, built inside of the rockets that we launched into the air at night. That's great. This is like the Estes rockets with a solid fuel. No, 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 these are air-powered rockets. Air-powered rockets. Yeah. Oh, and made and taped by the volunteers at council. Okay, yes. how, do you make, how do you make an air-powered oh, rocket? You should have brought one in. You yeah. should have brought one in. I wanted to see this, yeah. I, I did the Estes rockets when I was a kid, but mm -hmm. I didn't know you handmade them. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So different, different fuel sources are always air. Oh, we only yeah. use air. Air? I was wondering how They're you guys got powerful, away with though. shooting off rockets down in Pearl Harbor. Well, we're, well actually, there we do it, but we also do it at our camp. We're on top of a mountain, so there's no one up uh, there. So tell us. us about Camp Pom so that's on the north shore of Oahu. Mm -hmm. You have to take a, 
what is it, Comsat Road, mm -hmm. and you drive way up on this mm -hmm. one little so three miles, sheer cliff. Three miles yeah. We have 135 acres on top of a mountain that was gifted to us back in the early 1950s by the Hawaiian Pineapple wow. Company. And the exciting thing that we're going to be launching next year is we are building a new STEM Center for Excellence up there. And at that STEM Center, we'll have facilities to do everything from astronomy to oceanography to all different types of STEM activities. And we'll be inviting in community schools and educators, because one of the things that we learned in talking to different people is some of the science teachers even told us, I don't feel comfortable talking about preserving the watershed or environmental STEM. But in this, this is like a living laboratory up there. I mean, everything is up there, and it's so pristine and beautiful that it's quite an experience. It's an amazing place. Not too many people know, what is that, about 12, 1,300 feet up, so it's a little chilly up there. And it, it's cold for Hawaii standards. Man. Really? And, uh, <laughs> well, Personally, I'm a cold at nighttime. At nighttime. At nighttime, you think it's really warm? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't really it, take the, sleeping bags up there anymore. No, it's so really? warm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I remember my daughter went up to Kapamalu and she said it was freezing at night. Oh, really? I, no. I guess it was Maybe in the winter, December. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. it was kind of cold. But how big is your facility now? Uh, it'd be a 10,000 square foot facility. That's a so big it's building. a building. It's a large space. Single um, story? Uh, double two stories. Two yeah, stories. Yeah, so you are going to have a telescope. We area? have an innovation center. We'll have a computer lab center. We'll have a program activity area. Um, all different things. We have um, plots areas for agricultural plots where we'll be working with groups like Smart Yields and doing technology and agriculture. We'll be working um, just with all different. I mean, the, the wonderful thing up there is that we've got so much space that we can work on a lot of different activities and projects with with students and educators. How often will you be able to go up there and take advantage of this wonderful building? Uh, once the building is completed, it'll be year-round. Year-round, yes. so you yeah. could have weekly activities. Yes, wow! So yeah. different troops rotating around the island right. will be able to use and then the we'll, facility? And then we'll be bringing in schools that, not Girl Scouts, but but uh, schools coming in there as well as educators. Right? Well, that's wonderful. Right. What yeah. other activities might you do up at Camp Pomelu? Well, we certainly, part of phase two is putting mm -hmm. putting back in the ropes courses and climbing walls and things like that. Because, Physical activity. But, yeah. we, but we always tie it into a STEM processor. So they have to learn about in archery about physics. Now, this is our archery expert here, <laughs> and she can tell you about that. But um, the whole idea is to give them some of these outdoor experience, but have it be a learning and a STEM learning experience. There is a, there's a heavy correlation between... Uh, physics, uh, physical activity, and mathematics. Yes, okay? right. So right. good for you. That's that's great. Do you know what you want to do when you get into college? College is on your radar. It's only <laughs> um, a couple years down the road. What are you going to do? So um, I want to be a linguist slash pilot. So I want to eventually join the military and be a pilot. Okay. Um, I want to. My goal was learning eight languages. I'm starting to narrow it down a little bit more <laughs> into maybe five Middle Eastern languages. My future. Good for you. I struggle with two. <laughs> that, and actually, I struggle with my native language because I have trouble uh, public school. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to spell stuff on the screen. <laughs> we have trouble here. Uh, good for you. Gosh, five languages. I can't even imagine. I, I, I struggle. I grew up in Southern California, so I struggle with Spanish still. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you lose the skill quickly. Five languages, and you want to be a pilot. Now, as a pilot, you can fly lots of different things. Rotary aircraft, the helicopters, right. fixed wing, the air, airplanes, the big, the big ones, the fast ones, the slow ones. What do you think? Um, I'm either, I'm not 100% sure. I'm leaning towards maybe a C-17 mm. in that ballpark or something. It's a versatile plane. Yeah. Big yeah, it's plane. The <laughs> most versatile, I think, is a C-17. Mm -hmm. Why not Air Force One? Um, that's also on the list. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. Like I said, I'm not set. Um, I've had the chance to explore C-17 in my past, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm most familiar with. Okay. Um, I've also been up close and personal with things like the Blue Angels through things, events with Girl Scouts that I've been to. And so... That's great. Oh. Do they still do air shows here? I um, haven't heard of one. They they did a couple of years ago. A couple I did, years yeah. ago. And you went? I did. I, and this was the Blue Angels? Uh, show-offs. <laughs> Very good show-offs. That's great. And do you have college on your radar, Allison? I know I want to become a surgeon, but a I don't... A surgeon? Yes. But... I don't know, know which kind. what specialty. Well, I think all of them make pretty good money. <laughs> you're, you're, in, you're in a good place. Uh, well, and I think different schools specialize. Uh, but uh, thankfully, I think uh, pre-law and pre-med are the same, right? You just go to school, <laughs> take a lot of biology. And uh, will you guys be going to school here locally, I hope? Um, 
I'm not 100% sure I want to go to one of the military academies is one of my top goals. Really? Yes. Okay. And if I get any athletic scholarships whatsoever to anywhere, that'll be a goal then, too. That'll be one of them. <laughs> How about you? Well, um, my dad's in the military, so we uh, moved here about two years ago, but most of my family is on the East, East Coast. So I would like to go to college over there to be near family. Okay, where on the East Coast? Uh, Boston, maybe. Boston, okay. So what service? Um, don't your, know. Your father. Your father. Oh, uh, military. Which? Army. Oh, sorry, Army. Yeah. Army, yeah, okay. Army. <laughs> I grew up Army. I made everyone angry by joining the Marines. Oh. Just because I wanted to make <laughs> everyone angry. I don't know why I was a kid. <laughs> but I grew up Army. Everybody was Army. My grandfather, my dad. So. Army, a lot of opportunities in the Army. Maybe consider, uh, they also have programs to make you uh, a doctor. Yep. So you can, they'll send you to med school. Mm -hmm. Of course, they want something back from that. <laughs> yeah? Have you ever been up to Tripler and seen it? Yes. So they just did a whole bunch of new cybersecurity mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, I have to ask, with cybersecurity, now we're talking a lot about virtualization. Do you mm -hmm. guys do any mm -hmm. virtualization mm -hmm. exercises? Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, we actually had virtual reality at our last um, STEM programming that we did and actually for our big Women of Distinction event coming up in March, we'll, we'll have a very unique virtual reality walk through the new STEM Center for Excellence. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Uh, and let's get you guys back on the show as soon as possible. Now, with our closing, what do you guys want to talk about for the Girl Scouts? Do some recruiting, maybe? Um, <laughs> well, that is always a major plus. I think I mainly just want to put it out there that with the new cybersecurity pilots that we're doing, it's opening so many more doorways. And most girls think it's all about cookies and certain programs. But now that we're involving cybersecurity, it opens the door to basically every career that there is. I got to say, the cookies are really good, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm a product of Girl Scout cookies I can't resist. So you guys have the best product out there for that fundraiser. But I'm, I'm glad you guys are getting a taste for all these careers. Uh, cybersecurity right now, 0% unemployment. And that's only because we can't have a negative percent, right? right? But uh, just about everyone can get a job. I hope to see you guys in my cybersecurity program. When you get to college, come spend a little time at Capulina Community College. I'd love to teach you some of the ropes before you move on. But you know, if you've got to move on, I understand. Well, the most important thing to me is when you get your career, bring these brains. Back, back to the, to the islands, way. please, because we just keep <laughs> losing the intelligence. And I want to keep bringing you guys back. And guys that are motivated and smart like you, uh, I can respect that. And I want to be, uh, well, I, depending on you guys, we're getting a little <laughs> older here. We're going to, someday we're going to depend on you guys. These are the future leaders. These are the future leaders. You guys are going to lead this country. And I'm, I'm really happy about that, that you're putting so much effort into it. Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you, Sherry, very much. Very Thank much. You. Good job. Well done. Keep calm, carry on. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody, on the Cyber Underground. See you next week. Until then, stay safe.